Ladies and gentlemen of Zaya and the world at large, welcome to Goldsmith Money. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, you would know that the Torian teaser trailer premiered just 24 hours ago, and it was spectacular. So in tonight's video, I plan on revisiting that teaser trailer just for you, and at the same time, so we'll watch it in its entirety, and then we'll go back and look at the video scene by scene and try and uh, try and just get a few takeaways from that teaser trailer including the gameplay and uh, strategies and tactics which might be involved so uh, so something in it in this video for everyone I feel so without any further ado let's get into the video Let's get into the teaser trailer. This is Torian. Well, that is the teaser trailer. Like I said, spectacular. What were your initial thoughts? Please leave them here in the comments below. As for me, it the teaser trailer certainly captured the essence of Torian, as I imagine. This harsh, arid, arid planet, um, which, you know, it's difficult... Um, ...to navigate... Um, perhaps even you know, deadly, then at the same time providing hope and um, the potential for prosperity for, for these civilizations that have been stranded on their own planets um, with a lack of resources and a lack of room for expansion. So uh, certainly the, the teaser trailer set this scene, and, and then that's part of it, of course, and then the other part is the actual seeing the uh, warfare between the different civilizations. Um, but I'd love to get your opinion, so please um, leave a comment below what your initial thoughts were on the trailer. And uh, and while you're at it, please, uh, if you like this video, hit like and uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. So let's go revisit the trailer now. And this time uh, we'll, we'll take it scene by scene and we'll try and... Um, We'll try and just uh, you know, get, a, get a real close look to what's going on here and see if you guys see it the same way that I do. So, uh, just one second, I'll get it restarted. And here we go. So, yep, big the, the big planetary perspective, and it is all that orange sandy colour. So, and... We'll call it an arid wasteland, but we know that there is much, much more to Torian than just this desert landscape. So we continue on. We zoom down now. You can see the running sand dunes, windswept sand dunes. Close look at the dunes and then the rocky terrain behind. We get our first look at a Rebu. This is the a Rebu Scout. Uh, looks like it's big enough for three, maybe four people. 
Um, no, doesn't appear to be any weapons, and there appears to be a large aerial on the roof, and it's uh, it's making up making a bit of ground, so they can travel quite quick now. This is what I don't know. It looks like it has crossed a dune into a mining colony. But does this mining colony belong to the Rabu? Which I'm now beginning to think, yes, it does. That it's part of the colony we see get attacked. I wasn't quite sure initially. I thought it might have discovered the Afrati. Because the very next scene we see... The Afradi spring to action. So here come the Afradi. They're launching an attack against the Rabu. And I will just go back here. And um, we see this looks like a scout vehicle. But I'm not sure if it's fixed with some sort of weaponry at the side here. Um, and then we also get a glimpse of the larger transports here and here. So um, now I'm not seeing too many turrets on the Afradi vehicles. So perhaps the Afradi have a different type of weaponry uh, or perhaps the turrets are hidden and spring to action. We shall see, find out at a later date, no doubt. And this will, this continues. Now it starts to get exciting because here come the Jodon. And we first saw the top of, we'll call it a juggernaut vehicle. So we've got at least uh, six turrets that we can see in this, this frame. And then we head across to one of their smaller scout vehicles, which even has a turret on top of that as well. And uh, what immediately sprung to mind here was the uh, economics of these military forces. Now, I've played games throughout my lifetime where sometimes it pays to build up huge armies of smaller vehicles with just the single weapon. Uh, because it's far more cost effective than your um, than your juggernaut type vehicles you saw uh, originally. So anyway, one tactic to perhaps be considered by some, and certainly uh, I'll be experimenting with all sorts of tactics, including uh, the building of many many different vehicles for many different purposes. Now they they too. So the uh, Jodons too were heading toward the Rabu. Um, now we have a, this is a very nice frame. I like this one. So we see the Afradi once again. We see uh, one very large vehicle here, whether that's a troop carrier or some sort of um, uh, more uh, armoured armored attack vehicle. I'm not quite sure. Uh, and it is uh, escorted by four smaller vehicles here. But uh, we start to see some of the Afrati buildings now. We know the Afrati are more akin with a, um, a forest landscape, and it looks like that is uh, then carried across to their journey within to Torian, um, so more naturalistic. Now uh, we will see them continue into battle as well. So now we come to the... And I just want to stop it there and take it back. The Rabu. Um, the Rabu are generally uh, considered... The, well, they are the most intelligent of the three civilizations. However, to me, this isn't looking too intelligent. They've got... I'm not quite sure if this is a huge transport vehicle or freighting freighter. Uh, or whether this is some sort of large patrol vehicle. I don't know, but the way this is patrolling this city, I don't like it. And do they not... <laughs> do, does, does the pilot not know that the enemy is coming in? So um, the way they're patrolling this city, uh, I, I think, if it was me, I'd have it set up a little bit differently. But... It uh, does show what can happen in Torian, because from over the dunes come the Jodons. And so too, 
the Afradi. Now this missile goes straight up in the air and comes straight down on top of this building, and I'll mention this again soon. And here come the Afradi over the hills, and the Jodons are firing away, and the Rabu are in all sorts of strife. And that was spectacular. Torian. So, I just, I'll just head back to the main studio. So before I go any further, I just want to say to the Zaya team, well done once again. This is truly a high quality trailer. Um, everything you guys touch is, is such high quality. So um, uh, thank you and job well done once again. Um, now, I made some comments in there about different tactics and about the different vehicles. I'd love to get your comments below. I'd love to see what you guys have to say about this teaser trailer. Um, one thing, one question that's been bugging me for months and months is why aren't there any planes and helicopters on Torian? Why? Do you know the answer? Well, if you know the answer, put it in the comments below. But I've got an idea. I've got an idea. See, when I was looking at the specifications for the planet Torian earlier tonight, I noticed the atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure is 335 times that of Earth. So is Torian this planet where planes, helicopters, simply cannot function in the sky because the pressure is so high uh, that it would be like trying to fly a plane through the water. It just it just can't be done. Um, and submarines are just plain slow and cumbersome and they'd be sitting ducks for ground-to-air defences. So, have I got it? Have I got it? If you think I've got the answer right, if, you, if that's the reason there's no planes, and helicopters, and any other aerial vehicles in Torian, tell me below. Now, I did mention the missile in the video. I mentioned the missile because it just seemed to be fired from short range. It went straight up and straight down. And, and that kind of supports my theory that um, things are not flying too well on the planet Torian. So... In order to function uh, for transportation or um, for attack or defense, you're going to have to be on the ground. You need that friction of the sand. And then, of course, sand creates its own problems. So, so you see the tracks, you see the, the large tires So, uh, in the vehicles. Anyway, just a few thoughts of mine. So I guess there's only really one thing to say before I bid you all good night. And that is, have you pledged your allegiance? And with that, ladies and gentlemen, good night.